this is part two of my third Scrabble strategy tutorial. If you haven't seen part one yet, you should find that and watch that first. Uh, if you have, we're going to jump right back into it. To better estimate the synergy of a multi-tile leave, there are a few rules that you can follow, some of which are very basic. A two vowel or two consonant leave will generally have a lower synergy than if you have a leave that takes one vowel and one consonant. Of course, you already know this as balancing or maintaining the ratio between vowels and consonants in your rack, but it is intrinsic in calculating the actual value of your leave. From the opening rack, A-I-I-J-N-O-S, Jiao at 22 points is a better play than joins for 40 points simply for the more balanced leave of INS over the all vowel AI leave. Before going over a few of the more useful rules for estimating leave value, it is useful to group the tiles in terms of likeliness. Separating vowels and consonants creates three groups as seen here. Consonants are often separated by point value, but a better method with similar results is to separate soft and hard consonants. When multiple consonants are put together in one syllable, those consonants touching a vowel are considered soft, and those not touching a vowel are considered hard. In this list of words, crank, fling, bird, farm, prey, and silk, R, L, and N emerge as soft consonants. The common consonant pairings containing these soft values are seen here. Tiles B, D, G, K, P, T also emerge as hard consonants. Furthermore, some can be used as soft and hard, such as C, F, M, and W, while others have a tendency not to pair up at all, such as Z, X, Q, J, and V. This leaves H, which is unique for its main use in digraphs, SH, CH, TH, GH, and S, which is prolifically hard and soft, but also has the ability to change other pairings into soft consonants of their own, such as in sprints. The groups we have are hence vowels, soft consonants, hard consonants, medium consonants, solo consonants, and the unique H, Y, S, and blank, making 27. Most long words will make use of consonant pairings or groupings where it is necessary to bring in consonants from different groups. With the exception of solo consonants, tiles will generally synergize better with other tiles outside of their group. Let's take the tiles RN, Y, and TG from three groups. Notice how the only negative synergies are the pairings within groups, the two soft and the two hard consonant pairings. Let's look at my last five bingos. Castled, Voltaic, Sedilia, Fritz's, and Gunship. You can see that they all have a good balance between vowels and consonants, and have the consonants have a balance between hard and soft. You may also notice that the more soft consonants you have, the less vowels you have to have. Duplicates are also important. The 14 worst synergies for any pairing are for duplicate letters, such as CC and UU. If we sample the five-letter words that hold the following two-vowel pairings, the amount of five-letter words possible is much higher when the vowels are different. This also works out for consonants. F is the only tile where duplicating it actually has a positive synergy at plus 1.3. So if you do have two Fs, it may be a good idea to try and play them off together. Ss are great at a value of 8 points, yet two Ss are not twice as great at a value of only 11.9 points. Three Ss actually have a value of 11.7 points. So if you have three Ss, it's actually better not to conserve that third S and to play it off as soon as you can. With the opening rack G-H-I-N-S-S-T, conventional wisdom might tell you to play thing, conserve your S's, and place the G on the double letter score. However, playing things with the H on the double letter score gives six extra points and is worth burning the second S, which is only worth four points on your rack. Quackle evaluates two blanks at 50 points, and that's because it's generally very hard not to bingo with them. However, this translates into a synergy of negative 13.6, and that's because having two blanks in your hand is generally looked upon as being sloppy. Unless you had the fortune to draw them both together at the same time, it generally means that you held on to your first blank for too long. So now, instead of getting two bingos with one blank each, you're only going to be getting one bingo with both blanks. Time for some examples. Suppose you're playing a game and not a single vowel is being drawn. We obviously have to exchange, but what do we exchange? 
with the glottal vowel still in the bag, we're going to want to keep three of the consonants. With D, F, G, L, R, P, T, what do we keep? The F and G don't have good synergies with anything, so those are out of the question. We have D, P, T for hard and L, R for soft consonants. Take the best value tile from each group, R and T, and remember that they have good synergy. Now, which is best to keep between PRT, DRT, and LRT? You could try to keep the lowest value tile, the L, but having more soft consonants than hard consonants is not the best idea. Try to think of how many sevens would include each of these groups. You won't think of them all, but PRT has 544, DRT has 513, so about even. However, for each list of the fours, fives, and sixes, PRT edges out DRT with about 30% more words. This is impossible to know, but the valuation does reflect this, where PRT is worth 2.1 and DRT is worth 1.3. In this case, your best guess, and choosing either, would be good. If you have or will install Quackle, there's a file included called SYN2. This includes all the two-letter synergies and is about 378 values long. Now while this is too many to memorize, taking a look through and seeing if the values are about where you thought they would is very useful. For example, the three highest synergies, Q, U, N, G, and C, H, are obvious, but not so much the fourth highest, W, Y, at positive 2.5. With a hypothetical starting rack of C, F, I, M, P, there are three 14-point plays, Imp, Pick, and Mike. Knowledge or intuition of two-letter synergies would be vital in making the correct choice, where playing imp, leaving cf, is a negative 2.4, playing pick, leaving fm, is a negative 3.5, and playing mic, leaving fp, is a negative 6. For leaves of three tiles or greater, the same solution is simply not possible. Yes, every combination of tiles has its own heuristic valuation and heuristic synergy that Quackle uses, but it's not even worth looking at these. I've tried to come up with a simple formula that takes two tile valuations and combines them into multi-tile evaluations, but I couldn't achieve a correlation between my results and Quackle's output. From here on in, it is up to you and your experience to estimate what the valuation is for a three or more tile leave. With this setup and the partial rack MRTUX, there are two 40 point words with no good third play. Mix, 9G, leaving RTU, and 2, G9, leaving MRT. With no obvious defensive consideration, it all comes down to the leave. You may think that keeping RTU over MRT is the better play. Not according to Quackle. Uh, 2, leaving MRT, actually values 2.8 points higher than Mix, keeping RTU. I'm going to show you 10 groups of 3 letters. Which leaves are the best? Adding up the single tile values won't help you here, but I won't try and trick you like I did in the last example. Pause the video and put them in order of what you think is right for valuation, not synergy. If we take all this knowledge into account, we end up with something called canister, which is the bingo maker's best friend. Canister has a great constant to vowel ratio, a good hard to soft ratio, and is mostly composed of one point tiles. Many of you are probably thinking, yeah, A, E, I, R, N, S, T all makes sense, but the C? After all, the C can't be used in any two-letter words. Ganister actually has more seven-letter bingos in it than canister, and if you take a D over a C, there are much more bingos with a D in it than with a C in it. Before trying to explain this, we have to remember that the valuations aren't a product of reason, they're a product of heuristic experimentation. This means that they are derived simply from experimental brute force, which in this case is millions of simulations. So, keeping canister will simply give you a better chance of winning. But let's work into this a little bit more. Why C over D and G? Well, C is simply a much more flexible tile than D or G. As stated above, it can be used as a hard or soft consonant and pairs with a positive synergy with many more tiles than D or G. The D is also very dependent on E, R, and N. The number of D bingos without E, R, N is about 8% of the total, whereas the number of C bingos without E, R, or N is 13%.
the usefulness of g is also very dependent on being able to play that ing suffix. Bingos that end in ing make up for a third of all g7s. Of course, all of this is only useful if you actually know all of the sevens. In fact, the C becomes less and less useful as you become more novice. So generally because as a novice you use more two and three letter words where C is not as useful as the D and G. This is another fault in using Quackle. Quackle assumes through simulations and valuations that a player has a complete knowledge of the dictionary. At the novice level, most plays are generally comprised of two, three, and four letter words, which makes the C much less useful. Lower anagramming abilities mean that the bingos that you will find will probably use the ED, ER, or ING suffixes, or ones like them, which of course use D and Gs rather than the C. Depending on your level, the C, D, and G have varying levels of usefulness. At my level, I've just started to notice the C actually becoming more useful than the G and D. At your level, it might be useful to forget about canister and instead consider A-N-I-S-T-E-R plus one of C, D, or G. I'm now going to wrap the second part of this video up, take you to the third part where we're going to be discussing a lot more examples. Music